in St. Clair Baptist Church. How's everybody? Good? We got Steve and Carrie with us this morning all the way from Texas. Man, they said they had an itch last night and wanted to come be with us and just took off. No, they didn't say that. I'm telling one. But it is always good to have them here for sure. And uh, good, good to be with everybody. Uh, and if you're joining with us on Facebook or, or whatever there, we're certainly glad that you've chosen to be a part of us. And I do get a lot of, of positive um, feedback from those who um, are able to tune in or watch us later through the recording or whatever. So always, uh, always positive to hear that. So I um, want to uh, go through uh, several announcements that I have. I've got, um, got of course, tonight's service at... 6 o'clock, and then um, Wednesday night service at 6 o'clock. We will be observing the Lord's Supper today, so uh, hopefully you got um, a cup of the uh, juice and wafer there. Uh, if not, they're in the foyer, so make sure you get one of those. Um, and then we have for um, March the, let's see, March the 24th. We're going to wear pastel colors that day, so I'm sure we'll be putting them. And that's going to be in support of the Annie Armstrong. Um, Tim said he's done, he got plenty of those colors ready to go. So I was trying to get me and him to go on a shopping trip, and he didn't want to do it. So he said he already had them. So we, we'll be uh, looking for that. And then we'll have uh, on March the 30th will be our Easter egg hunt here, and that's at 1 p.m., and then on the March the 31st will be our sunrise service, and that will be at 6.30 a.m., and we'll have breakfast to follow. Um, then we'll head home and turn around and come right back for our regular services that morning, and no night service that night. Um, and then um, for Sedan, they'll be having a men's retreat uh, starting on the evening of March the 22nd, and then it'll be all day on the 23rd and a.m. on the 24th. Uh, and looking um, so that'd be a men's retreat. Have any questions, Janet or Jerry? And then also the donation of small water bottles. Man, I had one back there this morning, Janet. I'm a, I don't know. I ain't gonna say right now until I check. But she needs those dried out with the lids put back on. Why do I tell on myself all the time? I, mean, I didn't even have to say that. I guess I was afraid you were watching me drink it and gonna ask what happened afterwards. Um, Jerry's laughing at me now, Janet. So um, our North American Mission Go, uh, which is the Annie Armstrong, we've got a poster up here and we've got some brochures. We've got a church goal of $800, um, and that's to support North American Mission. So I challenge everybody to read in that and look at the statistics of the millions of people that that has an opportunity to, to get the word to. Um, and in that, the millions of people that are listed that have no hope, no hope of ever ever here in the gospel so uh, you can be um, you can help bridge the gap of hope there getting the word out to those people um, then we have Easter play sign up and let's see we've got um, for Wilma and those five teenage uh, grandkids that she has Lady Spring City that we helped at Christmas time uh, we're asking to bring food items in and have those here by March the 24th uh, anything that you think a teenager would like which is about anything I don't think I've ever grew out of that stage, Jerry. Still milk and all cookies, all that stuff's good. Chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets. I'm with you. All that BBS food, right? How many adults turn that down? Not hardly any. Right. Uh, so, and then, B, well, that's my next line, actually. BBS is June the 3rd through the 7th. And how many Mondays till Christmas, Emily? 42 Mondays till Christmas, right? Getting there. I got Tim excited first thing this morning. So, he, uh, all right. I doubt... Do we have any other announcements? <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> and I know uh, Michelle's wrote some of those on our board back here. So. And sign for the Easter place, but they're on the table. Okay. Okay. And for a clarification on that, you don't have to memorize anything. They're going to put the lines up and just read it. So, right. Yeah. So, make it easy. All right. All right. Moving on to. Um, Invite our scripture readers up at this time. Give me time to find the one Kirk sent me. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wow, 
That was right out of, right out of Sunday school lesson there. <laughs> any, any others? I got, I got one that Kirk sent me. Uh, it's from Jude um, 1, verses 20 and 21. It says, But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, Unto eternal life. And wow, what a good summation that's. So, Kurt, we appreciate you this morning. Um, I also wanted to do a shout out to uh, uh, Pam uh, Vest there if she's watching in, and then also uh, Ron and Loretta if they get to watch in, and, and others that uh, couldn't be with us today. Certainly missing them. So, you've heard me, um, you've heard uh, Villa and Hannah just a few weeks ago get up and talk about. Uh, the care center and the accomplishments thereof, and I won't go back into those, but we did have a chance uh, last Thursday night uh, at Bryan College for the annual banquet of the care center to go down there, and I wanted to briefly go over some of the the points that I took out of that that I felt uh, were good to share with the church and with you this morning, and St. Clair Baptist Church has long been a supporter of the care center. Um, when you looked at the silver sponsors down there, uh, that was our name. And we were the first church, nothing against any other churches. We had uh, people established in the church then who were a part of the care center, and they shared that vision with this church, and our church supported that. But we were the first church, to my knowledge, to ever officially be a sponsor of the care center. Uh, and when you hear about what they do, and you, like I said, you heard it from Hannah and Villa there a few weeks ago, and it's, uh, it's really uh, inspiring. Uh, but I wanted to go over some of the things. So it started out, uh, Tiffany uh, Soister, who is the CEO of the Care Center, uh, she got up and, uh, and gave a speech about and a, lot of st- a lot of the same stats that uh, Bill and Hannah shared with us. But she said a couple of things that I thought were really neat. And one thing she said, um, and I don't know if this was her uh, or if she quoted it, but she said, we aren't called to be comfortable, right? So... Being uncomfortable means you may have to go out and help with a care center. You may have to give money for the care center or different things. And this isn't a pitch about money today, by the way. Uh, but do as you're led. No, just, we're not going to have any offering for that. So another thing she, she talked about was it's 40 years uh, since the care center was instituted. Where, does anybody know where the first one kind of thing? I meant to. Was it? In low kind of? Okay, so 40 years, I would have gotten that totally wrong. I'd have said maybe 20-something, maybe, you know. 40 years the care center's been in existence there. So um, so she said she had her speech prepared, and she said at, it started at her dinner table as her and her husband were doing devotions and stuff that night that uh, she was talking about that 40 years, and her husband challenged her, have you thought about how significant the number 40 is in the Bible? And pretty much God got on the megaphone with her for the next day or two. And everything, every time she turned around was a verse about 40 years of this and that. And so she changed everything around in her speech and it went into the 40 years. And she listed those things in scripture that were significant to 40 years. And she quoted Einstein. And I love this because I talk about coincidences all the time that they're not a coincidence. And she said Einstein is quoted as saying a coincidence is God's way of remaining anonymous. I love that. I love it. It's a genius. But, okay, yeah, so I think he was a genius. But uh, anyway, it's pretty neat. So then we had a speaker, Andrew Wood. He was a very good speaker. Uh, certainly had a heart and passion uh, for the mission of the care center. And I'm just going to go through bullet points. I'm not going to try to rehash his speech, but take it down as bullet points that, that I wrote down. And then we're going to get to three major points that he had. Uh, But he said churches often like to do things outside the walls in hopes that those issues don't come inside the walls. That's kind of throwing money at something, but maybe we don't have to deal with it in here. If you remember last year, the guy that spoke I brought here, he talked about the duty of the church of women and men who are going through these unplanned pregnancies. A lot of times they'll go turn to their church and come back, but maybe they're not welcomed or loved as they should be. So they have to have that support there. And he said convictions are greater than traditions. You know what that means? If God convicts you of something, no matter what you feel like traditionally you've done, you better go with that conviction. Um, And he says, he says, what are we willing to do to get people to Jesus? You know, that's, that's a question for each one of us. Um, And he, and he, and he, and he talked about the story of those friends who let their friend down from the roof just to get to Jesus. That's a good set of friends, right? So you've got to be careful who you surround yourself with too, but are we that friend to others? Um, and then he said, um, 
that discipled Christians, Harold, discipled Christians are better suited to wear the whole armor of God. And he talked a lot about discipleship. And he said, that's where we got to be going, you know, as safe folks, is we have to, we have to be those disciples for God. And Harold talks a lot about that. Um, and he says, when God is involved, victory will be had. Victory will be had. We sung victory in Jesus this morning, right? Um, and he says, the word of God is our greatest tool. He said, hey, Jesus quoted scripture. Do we think we might should know it too? He didn't have to quote it, but he did. <laughs> All right. And then he said, here's three questions. This was the meat of his, talk, of his topic or his talk. Three questions to ask ourselves. Do we see? Do we see when we look around those in need or problems that we can administer to? And he talked about out of Luke 7 when the woman was washing Jesus' feet with her hair. And Jesus looked at the Pharisees and said, do you see her? Do you see her? what she's doing and then he said do we care do we care about the broken the great commission says we're supposed to we're supposed to take that message out right and his third point he said do we believe that god is going to do anything do we have that faith and confidence that he's going to do anything do we believe that god will use us will he use us are we willing (laughs) maybe we want to say i don't think he'd use me just so we don't have to get to the part of commitment he was challenging all of us in that room that night And he said, folks, is your congregation, is your home, yourself, your community prepared to receive folks from the care center, right? If they come to your house today, if you go to work tomorrow, somebody's like, hey, I need to talk to you about something. Have a little something come up. Uh, Or they come in our church. Are we prepared? You know, how are we prepared to receive them? Uh, And he says that we should have a desire for these families to know and see Jesus. I do remember this stat. Ten people, correct me if I'm wrong, ten people last year accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior just because of the facilitation of the care center. It's, it's, it, they came for other reasons, but they got Jesus out of that. Ten people, salvation for ten people. And he says God's people, quote, uh, parentheses church, have the framework to give this knowledge to the clients. We've got to be praying for these people, right? God has us here uh, for a specific reason, and certainly the care center. And here was the outcome, he said, that relationships are formed. There's forever homes for babies, and it changes their lives forever. It gives them a place. And then he, he closed by saying this, and I think we should remember this every morning. We are the hands and feet of Jesus. Us. We're it. Right? So whatever your mission field is that God has to utilize those talents he's given you uh, that are unique and wherever he's got you placed at a specific time in, in uh, in history and everything else there to utilize you. So be praying about that. So uh, I was excited. I always am. They have, I don't know how they do it. They have the best speakers every year. Every year. They're just tremendous. There's a good crowd. Oh, how much money? I think I saw something. $115,000 from that night. And that's probably not even all of it yet. Yeah. That's their money, not just Yeah. $115,000 raised that night. So God's in it, you know, and so anyway, something, something more to pray about. So when you hear us talk about the care center, uh, know that it's not just uh, a request for money. We never know what happens. It's, it's very influential in your communities. There's a, there's a new one in Spring City. There's been one in Spring City for a while, but even uh, a new place, and they've talked about that. All right, uh, prayer request. I have to really follow my outline now and get ahead. So just going through our new ones, we have printouts in the back. Remember Kurt Smith, who's continued to recover from his fall, and we miss them tremendously. Uh, can't wait till they are, uh, till he's back amongst us. Uh, David Edwards there, and uh, praying for Dr. Pullman and, and pain relief for him with his back. Uh, Eileen Kaywood, Paul and Amy Bartley, uh, Melissa's brother, mom and dad. Um, and then Sammy Houston, Michael Smith, Dwayne Geno with Surgery Wednesday. Uh, I had a praise. I uh, talked, uh, had a going to a dermatologist, and they're like, hey, I better send that little spot off there because it like, shouldn't be more than two weeks. So it's two weeks. <laughs> so anyway, came back good. So praise the Lord for that. Uh, Daryl Dempsey, um, Candy Latshaw, and a student she had talked about there with the foster uh, care stuff, and Ray Harrison. Praise John Eldridge. Bethany Daniel, Jamie Ford with loss of child, uh, Dave Burdick, Don Brown with the loss of his sister, Carl Butler, Junior Fugit, Sandra Houston, Mildred Houston's sister-in-law, uh, Kurt, she, oh, she did, okay. 
We were just talking about her Wednesday night, weren't we? So, all right. Uh, and then Kurt had asked prayer for a, a cousin of his named Janet, who's just lost her husband, uh, Chuck, last week, Long Battle of Parkinson's. Um, and also remember Jamie Wilson, uh, Rhonda Flanagan has uh, had a stent in her brain uh, placed there, praying for recovery. Um, Mackenzie Morris, uh, 41 year old, diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease, that has two teenage daughters. And Rebecca Foster with cancer. And then praise for Wayne Beasley. Wanted to make sure the church knew how much he appreciated the prayers and for his recovery post uh, surgery there. All right, so what do we have to add to our prayer list at this time? Thanks, Eric. Mike, I've also got an update. I was assuming that I had to pray yeah. for if they move to a new foster home and a new school. Okay. So. Well, you know, just look at that as God's plan in there. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, also, the baseball team will be traveling. We've got the first return ticket for it. So, they travel. Yeah. Franklin Miller. Franklin Miller. All right. <clears throat> okay. Who else we have? Our daughter Amanda Branscombe uh, has some gallbladder issues, and her job does not provide health insurance, so she's in dire need. So when we were talking in Sunday school about society status, depending on what you could get medically a lot of times, y'all were probably thinking of this, weren't you? Yeah. We were talking about how Jesus healed and it said the droves would come out in Luke chapter 6 um, where the broken people, the rough, poor kind of folks, and they all got healing. So uh, thankfully, thankfully, this is who we can turn it over to, right? All right, what else do we have? <coughs> Anything else? Uh, my friend Michael that we put yeah. on there, uh, he's out of his ICU room as of this morning, back into the regular room, and uh, everything went great, and they're expecting to release him Wednesday, so. That's awesome. He said to thank the church for the prayers, that he really appreciated them. It's a great opportunity. All right. Everybody good? Yeah, it seemed like some way. Are right, you good? That ain't no problem. She hadn't talked to me yet. Raise on there. Yeah. Uh, we uh, he had his test, but we've not heard from it yet, so I guess okay. we to continue to listen to us. Okay. All right. Everybody good. All right. Wilson, would you open us in prayer this morning, please? Sir. Bars going up there. I shared something on Facebook a few days ago, and I, it's kind of funny, but it's really, really true. It says a Christian and a non believer were walking down the road when Satan appeared before them. The non believer hid behind the Christian and said, Protect me. He wants me. The Christian smiled and said, No, it's me. He's, after. He's already got you. Ooh, wow. That's to the point right there. Hey, yeah. Oh my gosh. See, I told you I got so fired up about all that. I went right by. I've got it wrote down here. So, 
could have at least whispered it to me where it made it look like I remembered it. Um, I'll get you back. Huh? Ah, so. <laughs> she made an older man now, Ray, is what she's saying. Okay, and I do apologize for that. Wow. I'll skip mine when it comes up in a few weeks and make y'all feel better about it. Um, that was just a way for me to get, let y'all know I got one coming up, by the way. Uh, check your text message from Villa. The date's on there. <laughs> it was a busy month. Yes, I agree. It's a long list. Okay, who had a birthday this past week? John, Villa, and Ray. Who else do we have? Got them all right here. Boom, boom. That's it? All right, let's sing Happy Birthday, Friends. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear friends. May God bless you. All right, what about anniversaries? I don't think I saw but maybe one this month on your, it's a little later. Yeah, but you never know. Somebody might not be on the list. All right. Now I'll call on Ray. I am glad. I'd rather found that out now than later, though. Sir. I interrupted you going to do the birthday, but I appreciate that, Dave. I got, yeah, I thought I was doing good with that care center stuff. Blew right by it. Oh, man. Ray blew, but 317.
sharing there reminded me of something I had heard this morning in two different sermons uh, about just Satan's attack on on Christians and churches and different things and one of them was a message of Charles Stanley who, who passed away there several months ago now but one of in his earlier years he was talking about that thousands of preachers each year uh, you know abandon abandon that uh, part of it you know and Jim I know you and Steve both have talked about it in your sermons you know about people you knew that were pastors and you know, it got out, and then on the way to church this morning, the church, uh, First Baptist Church of Cleveland, that pastor, I can't remember his name, but he said approximately 4,500 churches in the U.S. each year go out of business, you know, kind of thing. So, uh, But don't be alarmed. If you listen to Jim's sermon several months ago, he talked about God's church isn't going anywhere either, and we're the church, right? Uh, so we do have comfort in that. But if you don't think there's an attack on families and Christians and churches and all that stuff, uh, yes, there is. So we should be in prayer about those things. All right. Who might have a song for us this morning? Ah, see, quiet bunch there. Yeah. Crickets. All right. Jim, what did you promise them if they let you up here early today? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't tell them that. They wouldn't be after it. So, all right. Well, we'll invite Jim up and uh, this time. So, good to be with you. Uh, Easter play sign for they need that. Mike has a tendency to get himself in trouble each time. <laughs> it is good to see you this morning and uh, to see you out and that uh, everybody remembered to 
reset their clocks and uh, change everything. You know, uh, we're so much we think in control of our world, and we don't feel like that God has the capacity to keep time right, so we mess with it every year. And uh, what does it do for us? It makes us grouchy and hard to get up and fuss all the time. You know, if we let things stay in God's hands, how much better the world would be? How much happier a place it would be? We're glad that you chose to be here with us this morning and as we come together. And we'll be uh, having our Lord's Supper in a few moments and uh, just celebrating that time. Our thoughts this morning are at his table. And... Uh, as we look at that, this uh, key verse of Scripture is going to come out of uh, Luke 22 and uh, 15. And, uh, but Jesus had gathered his disciples. He told them that uh, this, that night would be his last day. He was talking to him his last Passover with him. But he was reminding them that as they came... And reminding all of us that would have, would believe in him in times to come, that he wanted them at his table. They looked forward for him to being there, sharing together. In fact, in uh, twenty two fifteen, he said unto them, "With desire I have desired to eat this Passover you with you before I suffer." And it was a reminder. He invites us to his table. He wants us to be there. It's a special time. That was a night that will never be forgotten. You know, as uh, Mike was saying a few moments ago, you know, as churches go out of business, as pastors uh, fall out of being pastors, God's hand is all upon us. And what did he promise us? I'll be with you to the end. Church is not going anywhere. Churches, as, as his church, will never part. It's been attacked for over 2,000 years. And in that 2,000 years, in reality, the number who believe in him have grown. And so we can be secure in that. And as reminders, we come to his table. Why we come? It's a commitment to our Lord, a love. So what I want us to do this morning is to think together for a few minutes, while we're at his table, why do we prepare for this? What do we do? Well, first of all, it's a time we're told of remembrance. Uh, we can come together, we can be here, and we remember what he came to teach us. What he wanted us to know. We're to be instruments to carry the message of his life of who he was, of what he taught us to the world about us. Jesus, as God, came to let us know how much he loved us. So he told them that tonight that he desired to have this supper with them. And he reminded them of something else. He said, this will be the last time that we will do that until we do it unto the kingdom of God. What he was saying is, the next time we gather for this kind of thing with him personally, it'll be at the great wedding feast. Then he gave to them the bread and the cup and he shared it with them and uh, told them what they were doing. And so it's a time for us to stop and think, well, what, what are we to remember with what he was sharing with them? He was telling them something to remember that uh, much of it they forgot pretty quick when uh, they got in tight places and they got afraid. But he came and he not only told them, he was given a message that was for us throughout eternity until the time we gathered again. What does he say? First of all, he's reminding us we are his children. We are his children. He claimed that with his death on the cross. He came to die that each one that would be a believer, that would accept him as Lord and Savior, that he would have them as a part of his family. It's a reminder each time as we uh, share the Lord's Supper. I'm so happy that we can look 
at the cross behind us because that's what brought us together as a family. That's made us what we are, who we are because of his love there. Uh, this morning, Marlene and I were listening to a couple of the pastors that we usually listen to and the pastor from First Dallas was talking about the importance of what comes from the Lord's Supper, of that celebration and what we do. What he told us was, as we come, as he gathered them that day, his family, he says, I will hold you in my hand and nothing will ever take you out of my hand. It was grace that gave us salvation through faith. Ephesians 2.8 says, For by grace are we saved through faith. It's not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Was he reminding us? He's reminding us that we're his family simply because of grace. There's nothing that we could do to have ever learned it. There was not anything that we could ever have monetary or in giving or anything else that could earn it. It was all through grace. It was God's love. Because of that grace, we owe him our life. But we owe him more than that. Our life here. But we owe him eternity as we look forward to the time that we will be with him and walk with him on those streets of gold. Paul in Romans 5, 2 uh, reminded us, our hope is built on faith and the grace he gives. What a blessing. That's what we come to remember all of these things. He continues, though, there's something else he wants us to remember. He wants us to be people of action, people that go forth and live out our faith, ready to walk with him, ready to serve him, ready to share who he is, what it's all about. So this supper reminds us something. It gives us the purpose of our lives. I can only imagine how worthless a life would be if you walk through all of your time and you never knew Jesus in anything about it. Can you imagine that? Or if you were caught up in a false faith. Once again, the pastor this morning reminded us of that. He said, you know, there is only one way to salvation, Jesus Christ. We can claim all these other things, but they all end in nothing. Only Jesus gives us that eternity. So we have a message. We're to touch our world with. We're to make a difference in. We're to reach out to others and share. Acts 1.8 reminds us in remembrance, go tell. Go tell somebody about what Jesus has done in your life. But this, this time at the table is something else. It's a special time of worship. You know, we gather each week to worship and uh, to be with our Lord and just to share that time with Him. But when you come to the Lord's table, it's a special time of worship. It's a time that we need to make sure we come prepared. He's reminding us of that. Paul reminds us through the scriptures of that. We're to come in prayer, looking at our lives, thinking about are we ready to gather with him this morning. John Piper, noted theologian, made this statement about worship. I thought this was a powerful statement. Sometimes I tell you to uh, be sure and remember something. If you don't listen to anything else, I have to especially tell Mike that in case he goes to sleep or you know. <laughs> No, Mike takes notes. He's very careful about that. I have to remember that as I prepare stuff. But John Piper said this. Worship is reflecting back to God his worth to us. Did you ever think about that? Our worship is saying, God, this is what you are worth to me. How precious is that thought? How precious is that statement? And so as we come to this table... It's a reminder of why he is so special, why he's so important to us. He is life himself, itself for us. 
He's our creator. He's our teacher. He's the one that gives us salvation. How powerful it is to come and just think and worship, saying, God, how much we love you. How special you are to us. One of the things that as I've traveled across the world and been with Christians in other parts of the world, is one thing that's always very evident as you run into a believer, whether it might be in Russia, whether it might be in uh, Middle East, whether it's in uh, Indonesia, China, there's one thing in common. When you meet them, you realize immediately we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. It doesn't matter the color of the skin, the language that they speak. They see you. They recognize you. And we love each other because of that faith. That's what the supper teaches us. That's what Jesus was telling us that night as they gathered around him. He was saying, do you understand that you as a believer are totally different from the world about you. You're one that walks in love, understanding, and caring. You're all brothers and sisters to Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And in worship, a reminder that we're always reverent in our worship, in our joy. We know him. We know who he is, what it's about. There's something else special at this time. We know that he promised us at any time that we're gathered, that he's with us. But I think that when we have the Lord's Supper and when we're there at the table, there's something special about his presence. We feel it in a more powerful way. We feel his hand upon us because we're sitting there remembering exactly what he did for us. Remembering that he was willing to sacrifice all that he had his life because he loved you that much. And do you ever stop and think, if it had only been you, he would have still loved you that much. He'd have been willing to do it, whatever it took. And so, in worship, as we come at the Lord's Supper, I think we come in expectation of knowing his presence is there. That is right beside us in what we do. It is in our time this morning. Uh, as we come, we'll eat that bread and drink the cup in remembering. But we do that in praise. Praise to God for his perfect love. Praise to God for sending Jesus, our Lord and Savior. God himself came to be among us. So it is a special time of worship together that we as individuals praise him and give our thanks for what he's done for us but more give our thanks that he still walks with us that he promised us my presence and my spirit will always be with you until we gather again and then the third thing the supper teaches us it's a time of service a time as we come we gather in his name. And in that gathering, it should give us a desire to go out and move and, and change and make a difference in our world. Whether it's us as we personally walk and share and witness, whether we might be doing mission work and, uh, in the community as Jerry and Janet is going to do, whether it's uh, remembering uh, what we do uh, through the care center as uh, Villa and Hannah, as Mike has reminded us as we work through that. Or whether it's the little things we do in taking care of one another, reaching out. It's, it's a time of service. It's what God has called us to do. You know, one thing that I remember as he tells us, and as we come to his table each time, do you remember, do you realize that we have a special host that's there with us. That host is Jesus. It is his table. It's not our table. It's the table that he prepared for us. 
And so we come to his table at his invitation. It's a personal invitation to each one of us. As he would look through and he'd call us by name this morning and say to us, hey, don't you want to come join me today? Don't you want to come and be at my table? Why? What did he say to the disciples? Because I desire to be with you. What a blessing that is. What a blessing it is to reach out and make that difference. You know, one day, all of us, no matter what our age is, one day our lips will be silent. Our time here on earth will cease. That will be over with. But because of what he did, because of us gathering with him, it's a reminder that we will always be eternally with him and eternally together. It's this gift of salvation that gave you a personal gift, not given in groups, but given each one individually. One day you met him personally. One day he spoke to your heart and he said, come, join with me, be a part of my kingdom. Come and walk with me. I'll show you a new way of life. And so we go to and come to his table to be fed with the elements that we have together. A time of celebration, a celebration of what he gave, of what he did, but also a celebration that of two things we can remember. One thing that he has given us through faith, life, the life we walk in this world, the life that we enjoy as we walk with him and celebrate, the life we enjoy as we celebrate with brothers and sisters in Christ. I know no more special time than when we gather as his family. Gather with his family just to be together, the special time. Because as we come, we remember one another, we pray for one another, we celebrate the answered prayer that he gives us. But more than that, as we come together, we celebrate him and who he is and what he's done. And so it's so special that he said for us, do this in remembrance of me. Because each time that you come together and remember me, it becomes a more special time in our lives and what we do. So I want us to begin with a word of prayer, and then we'll go into our Lord's Supper as we celebrate together. Father, how thankful we are this morning that 2,000 years after Jesus walked among us, we can still come and come to his table. It wasn't a one-time table that he set before his disciples. It was an eternal table because he prepared it for each one of us, for each believer that will come at whatever time together in remembrance of him. And Father, it's a table that is eternal because one day we'll gather again in heaven with him and he'll personally oversee that table again for us. Father, how thankful we are because through our faith, through our celebration, through our coming, through the blood of Jesus and his life in us, we know we have eternity. And Father, we thank you for that. What a blessing you gave to us in it. And Father, I pray that this morning, as we celebrate this special supper, that you would help us lift it up and celebrate it in the way that you call us to. That, Father, in every aspect of what we do, we'll honor and give you the praise for what has taken place. Bless us now as we partake. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. It was near Passover time. 
Jesus had asked his disciples to prepare the table for him that night. They had had several Passover meals together, but Jesus knew this would be quite different. I'm not sure that they understood that. They just knew it was Passover time. But it would be a time that they would never forget, a time that we would never forget. Luke 22, 7 through 22, uh, it shares about it. It was a day of unleavened bread, so he had sent Peter and John to go and prepare a place so that we could get ready and they could get ready to eat. He gives them all the instructions of what they're to know and what they're to do, which is a reminder that he had already set it up. He had it already in place. But then, as they gather in that night, he tells them, when the hours come, I desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for shall not eat it again until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He continued with the meal as he took the cup and blessed it and gave it to him. He said, I will now drink henceforth again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God has come. He took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them and saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me and the cup in like manner. He said, This is a new covenant and my blood is poured out for you. As we get ready to begin our supper this morning, uh, it reminds you to go ahead and uh, take the top off the little cover for your piece of bread. Because if you're like me, it'll take a few minutes for that to take place. I'm very careful to do that early because I can see me get up here and not get it off. But I remind you to go ahead and start doing that and have it ready. Because we come now to that time of the observance of his request. We do this in remembrance of him. We celebrate the love he poured out for on us on a cross and the power that he put into us as he lives within us. His resurrection he gave us for eternity. This is his promise that he'll always be with us. So that night he took the bread and he broke it and he blessed it and he gave it to him. As we look at our bread for a moment, I want us to take a moment that we pray and bless it just as he did. So I'm going to ask Tim would he say our prayer for the bread. And we are told that this is the bread which came down out of heaven, not as the fathers ate and died, but he that eateth this bread shall live forever. It was said on that same night he took the cup and after he had blessed this, he got it ready for them and passed it to them. As we get ready to take a cup, I'm going to ask that uh, Ray say our prayer for the cup. And he said, this is my blood which was shed for you. Paul reminds us, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. What a blessing.
Paul went on to remind us, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he shall come again. What a special time that we can celebrate the sacrifice that he gave for us. We're told that after that they had celebrated the Lord's Supper, that they sang a hymn before they went out. This morning we're going to do that as an invitation hymn because as we've been together celebrating the Lord's Supper, celebrating what he told us, it's a time that it may have touched you. You may have not been one that participated in the Lord's Supper. You may not be able to come to his table yet and say, Lord, you are my Savior. You live within me. If not, I pray that this would be a time that you would ask him into your heart. Ask him in to change your life and to have the new walk. What a blessing it would be for you at that moment to say, God, I belong to you now. Maybe someone here, it may be someone listening to us this morning, but we invite you to come and be a part of his kingdom. We ask you now if you'd stand together for our time of invitation. so kind to us and Lord so patient and loving so full of grace and Lord as, as you grace us as you pour out your mercy on us Lord would you help us to be better and better at being channels of that grace to extend it to others to share the love of Jesus in ways that they'll, that they'll hear our testimony that their lives will be changed yes. and so Lord go with us as we leave this place, this 